So before we dive into this incredible episode that you are about to hear on The David Nurse Show, I just wanted to say a special thank you for being a listener, for tuning in. You could be anywhere else in the world right now and you are with me listening. And I also want to ask you, if you find value out of this episode, out of any of the episodes, to share it with a friend, share it with a family member. Somebody needs this and you can be the person that changes their life. And also, if you could, it takes about 12 seconds in total to leave a review for the podcast. Go to Apple, the podcast app, and leave a review. Five star if you love it. You choose, write a review. Let me know if you leave a review, and I will shout you out. I will give you a gift. I will have a conversation with you. I'd love to hear from you if you are listening to this podcast. So go to the Apple podcast app, leave a review, because it helps It helps people that are searching podcasts, that are trying to find something of optimization, mindset development, and we will pop up as the top podcast. So you're also helping others by leaving a review and subscribing. Also, the show is on YouTube. If you want to watch me talk to the guest, you can watch it on YouTube, David Nurse channel. You got it. You still have the swag. You know when you like, you worry, like I even worry that too, when I work with like young professional players and and, college athletes i'm like do i still have it like will they still resonate with me if i'm saying these old terms i keep saying when's the time where i'm going to throw some jargon out there and the tell is going to show up that i'm a boomer because (laughs) i don't identify that way like it doesn't feel like that to me in my body and everything seems natural and organic and the language that i use and the people i hang out with but i realized that when i looked at the people i've been hanging out with the most lately they're like 35 years old I don't know why I'm, I mean, it's like something is weird there. So it I was just keep doing me. Hey, I'm 35. So we're, we're best friends right there. there you go. <laughs> You're a little old for me, but okay. <laughs> I, I'm getting on the old end. I know you knew all the words I didn't, you know, what was, what was really funny. So I think it was, I think it was two seasons ago. And I realized this. I was like, I told my wife, we were watching. I was like, Hey, Mark has some swag because when I saw you roll up into the the bonfires with the Jays or the Air Force Ones or Jays, <laughs> I told Taylor, that, I was like, "Hey, he's got it." Hey, that's a little street hustle right there. Yes, and I've told people shit. about this. I I play a lot of basketball, and one of my guys said, "Hey, you know, here's some sneakers. You like these?" I wasn't in the game. I did this thing, Sneakerheads, a couple years ago, a comedy thing on Netflix that was with another basketball friend of mine. And um, and I was hip to the game, but I wasn't in the game, sneaker-wise, right? And uh, so he, he showed me these shoes, and I bought a pair for 200 bucks. They turned out to be what I now know are these, you know, great Jordan 1 off-white, yeah. you know, University <laughs> Blue that are worth a couple grand now, right? And so I started to get into it. So I said to my show, I'm like, hey, you know what might resonate with our audience is if I showed up wearing sneakers all the time, like if that was my thing. The hustle was I need somebody to buy me sneakers. <laughs> I didn't want to buy them. <laughs> but I know wardrobe's going to have to do it. And my executive producer is young and she's, you know, very hip and she's kind of a sneaker head. And so this season, I think I got eight new pairs. So um, yes. the hustle so is You've got the hookup. You've That's got it. the shoe hookup. You're good there. Almost. Almost. They're not the... Yeah. They're not the real like, pricey ones, but they look good. So they do and look I good. To buy I, I was wondering that when you were on there, I was like, how did he pull this off? How did he get them to say yes to that? I love it. Some of them are mine, but most of them are theirs. Nice. nice. Yeah. Well, if you But you know, come- there was something else to that. There was something actually real to that that I, I stumbled upon. What's that? How your feet touch the ground, what you stand on and how you feel in that kind of matters to me. And the actual me likes to play basketball. I'm an athlete a little bit. When I'm spending my time in my life, I'm in sneakers. You know, that's what I wear, right? And to wear something else didn't feel as grounded as what my feet are used to being in. I know that sounds weird, but I know how to stand in those. You know, I know what I I, I know who I am there. So that kind of felt organic. You know what, though? It's perfect for what you are teaching as well. If you're going to say, hey, you have to be who you are, and then you're over here wearing some dress shoes that don't even fit well and are giving you blisters, you can't be yeah. preaching that you got to be who you are if you're not being who you are. So there I you think, go. It works that way, too. 
Yeah, I always say you got to feel you got to feel right in your shoes, but I meant that metaphorically. But I'm <laughs> now I'm now it's legit. Okay, unbelievable here. My new favorite product for health. Crazy that I hadn't heard of this before. Pendulum. Pendulumlife.com. Let me break this down for you. Okay, so we know that glucose spikes is what makes us fat, added fat. They have Pendulum glucose control, which supports your metabolic health. Metabolism is the key thing to burning fat, staying in great shape. This glucose control, it helps lower your glucose spikes, boost your metabolism, supports gut health. Yeah, you better believe I'm using that. And they have what's called Acromanzia. Okay, so check this out. This is the first and only brand, Pendulum, to offer Acromanzia. It is the key strain for gut health. It nourishes and regulates the gut lining, which we know the gut lining, the gut microbiome, is basically like our second brain. They feed each other. Acromanzia nourishes the gut microbiome, helps you support a healthy weight, and literally helps you stay healthy and not get sick over time. Oh my goodness. Yeah, seriously, I've been using this and my gut is awesome. Glucose control, awesome. Feel with ton of energy. Haven't been getting sick. Pendulum, pendulumlife.com. They are changing the game in probiotics. No longer do you have to guess. That's the worst. You order something from Amazon, you're like, yeah, I hope this works. Yeah, you don't have to guess anymore. Pendulum is changing the game of gut microbiome. And just for you, for listening to this podcast, code David20 at checkout. Go to PendulumLife.com. Notes, well, this will be in the show notes. This is P-E-N-D-U-L-U-M Life.com. Code David20. I'm telling you, this, <laughs> it's the real deal. Check it. Man, so you're a hooper. That's awesome. Well, I love to hoop. I don't know if I would describe myself as a hooper. That makes you uh, a hooper, man. What I am now is a guy who now knows how good I'm not. So now I can play with it. Like, I, like I, I got my reality together. I used to think I was better than I am, and I was worse than I am now. Now I know how good I'm not, and that makes <laughs> me much more effective. So, And I just love everything about the game. I love the game wow. itself. I love what it has represented. It's it's my touchstone. It's my my team cool. of, of of men and women that I get very real with. That's a place where I act like a twelve year old and say things I shouldn't and get forgiven for it. Um, and um, and I've been playing with a lot of the same guys for a lot of years. And then a lot of guys who are much younger than me. And now I find myself getting into these really deep talks on the court, right where we're open. Man and um, and it keeps me young. Um, you know, the balance of basketball to golf is getting heavier golf than basketball these days, you know, because yeah. um, yeah. I can I can do this. But uh, I still like to get out there and bang it around a little bit. There, there's a camaraderie with basketball that's like none other. I, I, that's where I can't I've describe it. My, yeah, the most of my connections have come from basketball games. Like my whole life has been basketball and NBA stuff like that. So if if you ever get out, are you where are you based at? I'm in Sherman Oaks. You're in Sherman Oaks? Oh, man, I'm mm -hmm. in Marina Del Rey. I'm right down the road. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's a big, it, big difference in the road, but uh, yeah. That's true. I, it's, uh, it's, it is a funny thing when people say, hey, it's only 30 minutes without traffic. I'm like, yeah, well, when are you driving 4 a.m. on a Sunday morning? That's the only mm -hmm. time without traffic. That's right. Yeah. So, man, if yeah. you ever want to go to a Lakers or Clippers game, 100%, I got you. Got some players that play for them. Could definitely hook you up if you're down, a down. Okay, love that. that I played for a long time in the NBA Entertainment League when it was up and running. Did you? Did and, you uh, play it was with? Uh, with Pardon me. Sorry. Did you play with Brecken Meyer? Brecken was in it. Yeah. Yes. Everybody passed through at some point. I and I laugh about it now because when the kids were young, I'd walk out in the world and we'd come up on some just big star, you know, Nick Cannon yeah. or, or Ice Cube or whatever. And, you know, we'd be like, oh, no. Or, or even just some monolith of a guy. And then all of a sudden their face would break out and smile and go, Wahlberg, what's up? And we'd, you know, dap it up. And they're like, how do you know these people? I'm like, I ball with these people. We have a connection. <laughs> 
And that gains instant credibility with your kids, no doubt. Instant. Street cred. Everywhere uh, I go. I, I, I walk, you know, and, and there have been times where it's really been interesting where, you know, I've run into some people from the league in a situation where I was not comfortable and the league guys were around me and all of a sudden it was like family. So, uh, and we've all supported each other over the years too. A lot of us have been friends for a long time. Man, that's cool. Why did they stop that league? They're not doing it anymore. Well, they? the NBA stopped sponsoring it. Then it became the E-League. Uh, and we played over right. at, um, for a while, they were at Sports Club LA. on the, I, I don't know if it's Equinox or whatever it is now. And it wasn't quite the same. But back in the day, you got NBA gear. They hook you up with shoes, rip away pants. I, I said the best. I would show up for, like, draft day and get the gear and then try not to show up for games to help my team. I said the best. I have a ring. Like, we won. So I have oh, a no. championship ring. Oh, yeah. And we were the Lakers. It was the 10th year. It's sick. It's got, like, the X on it with diamonds and all this. And I said the best thing I could do to help my team in that championship game was miss the game because I was out of town. So <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't water down the rotation. So I did what team players do. <laughs> Stayed off oh, the court. Oh, baby. You, you know knew my your role. role. That's, yep, <laughs> yeah. yep. Oh, that's classic. Yeah. Man, this is even better than any questions that I brought up. I had no idea it was going this way. I have one of the questions to start us off with a bang, but like how much cooler can you get than, hey, I have a, a championship ring for the Entertainment NBA League. Like, do you have says something Lakers. more? I have a Lakers that? championship ring. Lakers championship ring. Wow, I mean, it's, man. it's the Walmart Lakers, but it's still the Lakers to me. So, yeah, it was you good. You can rub that my best Lakers fans. You the best story I can tell you to describe my level of play is that I was at the Hollywood Y, which is my home court, and I'm running with these two guys who play professionally. Um, and, uh, you know, names don't matter, but they played overseas and maybe here as well. Big, big, 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, yeah. And I'm in with them. When we ran several games, I was just doing my thing. This was years ago. And I'm much better now, and I was not good then. We finished the round. We finished playing. And I'm in my 40s at this point. And, uh, these guys are young and they got ice on their knees, ice on their back and, you know, icing up and everything and taking their tape off and everything. I, I said, fellas, you know, man, I've been running with you the whole day and I'm twice your age and I don't need ice on anything. And without a beat, the guy puts his arm around me and says, Wahlberg, when you jump this high, your knees last forever. <laughs> and that sums up what I bring to the game. So. Uh man, that's the same yeah. style as I played. I had no vertical leap at all. Hey, I, I grew up with a guy who made a career out of it, Kyle Korver. He couldn't jump at all. He couldn't move at all. But, man, he could shoot it. Yeah, I've also had guys tell me, nobody told you you're not 6'7". You know, they, they <laughs> constantly tell me that. You know, they, they what do they call me? Um, uh, no, the guy, when I signed up at the gym, uh, one day I come in, instead of it being MW, he signs me up as 6'5". I'm like, what is that? He says, because you think you're 6'5", and you're only 5'6". <laughs> I said, first of all, I'm 5'10", and I see myself a little bigger than that. So, anyway. So, you know one of my favorite feelings in the world? It's getting a great night's sleep on cozy and comfortable sheets and blankets. And for me and my wife, that is absolutely cozy earth. Cozy earth, comfort, more comfortable than cotton. It's made from bamboo. And get this, it has been featured on Oprah's favorites list oprah yeah favorites list for the last four years in a row they even give a hundred night sleep test that means you can try them out for a hundred nights and if you don't like it you get fully refunded it's high quality so cozy so comfy you won't want to get out of bed and now i teach people to get just jump out of bed but with Cozy Earth, you ain't going to want to get out of bed. And what they're doing for my listeners is incredible. Never been done before. 40% off. Are you kidding me? 40% off? If you go to Cozy Earth, C-O-Z-Y, Earth.com, and enter the code DAVIDNURSE40 at checkout, that is DAVIDNURSE40, you will get 40% off the best covers, the best sheets you've ever had in your life. Trust me. You will absolutely love these. You'll probably be sleeping in the next time I do a podcast. Check them out, CozyEarth.com, David Nurse 40 for your special discount. I love that. But, but you know what? That kind of goes into what we're going to talk about. And even just starting it off is like you have that type of confidence. That's unwavering confidence. You're going to step on the floor with these guys who play professional and be like, hey, look, 
I am 6'5". That's what I believe. But the same thing with you starting into your career, because like there's like if you look at it and you say, hey, I want to be a host on television. And maybe that's not exactly what it looked like as you started, but that's not easy to do. And that takes a lot of balls, Mark. Can you talk us through like what was that your goal yeah. and what were the challenges and roadblocks? Well, first of all, um, no goal. No, no plan. Goal. And I preach no goal, no plan a lot. Wow. I'm like, a lot of y'all are driving the bus. I'm riding the bus. I'm letting something bigger than that drive my bus. I'm riding the That's bus, true. and wherever it takes me is where I'm supposed to be. That's the question is, when you get off the bus, do you get off the bus and onto the court, or you get off the bus and you're on the sidelines? Like, where you show up, right? Not, yeah. not the destination, but wherever it is, you got to show up. So it all, I mean, the first... The, I find that stories of success have a repetitive and um, and similarity to them in, in your life. So I could probably tell you several different stories, but I'm going to start with the first one that comes to mind, the one that my wife suggested I tell you. Um, nice. Right after I got married, I didn't have a degree, um, and I didn't have a clue. Um, and I got a job through a friend as a runner, which is below a PA, at Dick Clark Productions. And Dick Clark became my mentor, but this wow. was a seminal moment. So I'd been there a little while and I was the funny kid from upstairs or whatever, but I was trying to learn how to be a producer or what I'm trying to find a career. Right. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to stay in show business, but it wasn't going to be on camera acting or anything like that. So we're going to tape a show and it was a weird show in that it was a um, Dick was hosting it and we had an audience, but this, he was doing throws to these clips, but we didn't have the clips. So there was really nothing to watch. And my boss said, don't hire a warm up guy. You know, the guy who entertains the studio audience. Uh -huh. Then we get backstage about to go and Dick turns to my boss and says, where's the warm up guy? And then the, my boss throws me directly under the bus, goes, Mark. And I'm like, uh, let me get on it. Dick turns to my boss and said, get me that funny kid. Uh, he'll be fine. And that was me. Uh -huh. So many people have told stories similar to say that when Dick Clark tells you to do a job, that you're not qualified for, you assume he knows something more than you do, right? <laughs> so, so he put his arm around me like a dad. Like when Dick would brief you on something on set or something, because he didn't want people to hear you, he'd hug you, you know, chest to chest, and then cool. almost hold the back of your head and whisper into you. And he was doing that to me. And I'm already, this is like bigger than I could deal with. And he's like, um, yeah. just ask trivia questions, give away t-shirts, you'll be fine. I'd never seen anybody be a warm up. I had had extensive time on stage and musical theater and other stuff that he didn't know I knew, but I didn't know this at all. And so survival mode kicks in. And what, if I have any innate gift, I hate to use that word, but any innateness, it shows up in a survival mode usually. Uh -huh. And so right then I went into survival mode. There are 200 of them in the audience, one of me, I don't know what to do. I'm not a comic. I don't have material. But each one of them probably has about a minute or two of something interesting. So I flipped the script, and I just had a relationship with these people. I chose to enjoy them, right? That was my natural instinct. I chose to be interested. And the word here is choose. Make a long story short, I did my thing, whatever that was. Didn't know I had one. And it was good. And that was the opening door where I went from – it's just the – I always talk about these left turns you didn't expect. And all of a sudden I go from a guy in the office who's one of the many going and getting coffee to a guy with a skill set that pays, I was getting 250 a week plus 20 cents a mile. Um, and now people are offering me hundreds of dollars a day for a few hours of joking around with people. And that turned into a career. I became one of the top warm up guys. So that was like the first pivotal moment of, oh shit, you know, sink or swim. And it, it follows a trope of, yeah, I can do that. And then I'll figure out how to do that. And people say, what about, yeah, I'll do it. And then I could yeah. give you, we waste this time. If I told you jobs I did, I wasn't qualified for, but I said I was, you know? Man. So that was a turn. Man. And in that turn was the discovery of the thing that I have mined for all the gold I can get, which is relationship. Yep. So for me, it wasn't yep. about jokes or bits. I developed some over time. But it was about me communicating somehow non-verbally, yo, I see all of you. 
I love all of you, and I can't wait to get to know all of you. And we have an important role in what's going on here. And that's enough to sustain hours, you know, as opposed to some jokes. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of the way I've kind of coached people in public speaking, things like that, is that, you know, there's what you're going to say, but more importantly is what is your intention? Who are you being? And then the words, the words are so far down the list. You know, if you know who you're being and what your intention is, you know, I use higher power. I use universe. I use spirit. I use God as words. I just know there's an energy and a vibe that's bigger than mine. And I always, before I go on stage for a live audience, say, I'm going to open my mouth and you talk and we'll see what happens. And that seems to serve a good way to do it. Yeah. 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 You, You know what? That is, that is so good, Mark. There's so many things in there and, and just stepping into a room and not trying to be somebody you're not, but just trusting that you can be authentically you and that's going to shine through. But what you hit on there at the end too, and I want to dive into is how important it is to ask questions. So I'm just going to set the stage here. Me and my wife, we were watching Temptation Island and I'm going to self-admittedly say, I'm not the biggest fan of reality dating shows, but when, (laughs) but, but when we get to the, to the bonfire moment, and you start asking questions, I am blown away. Because as somebody who does that for a living as well as a mindset coach, I'm like, this guy is different. I have never seen this before. What is it? First of all, I'm so honored. Given what you do and and what I've seen of you, I'm honored that you'd say that. So thank you. I want to say that. Well, I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, no, thank you very much. That means a lot to me. It is But it's just different. The way you go about it is different. Like you're actively asking questions. You're not telling people, hey, you need to do this. You need to do this. But they get more out of it by the way you ask questions. Is there a, I mean, I I know you kind of touched on that, but is there something in people as far as why this is? Well, that why is the word. So here's the experience for me. And I had to reverse engineer this because I was Mm. in my life. I just have been doing me. And like I said, most of the skills that I have are based out of fear that I grew to survive. Right. Yeah. And, and people talk about like, I've, I've come to this phrase that Gen Z has given me that makes me feel good that I'm an empath. And we throw this phrase around, but empath, what it is to be an empath is to develop a keen sense of paying attention to protect yourself from bullies in the world. Right. Yeah. So it's yeah. intuition from paying attention. I developed that growing up in the deep South. I could get into that on some other day. I wasn't a big guy. I was, I, I had things to fear. There were people out there that, you know, probably more created, but so what, what I developed was a deeper listening. So the experience for me of asking questions is when is one is I'm not, to me, it doesn't feel like I'm asking questions ever or even speaking when I speak to somebody, it feels like I'm answering a question that's already been asked. Because there's a vibe in relationship. Yeah. Yeah. That's my dog. There's a vibe in, in relationship. And that vibe is there. But as we develop language, you got to no, Hey, we love dogs on this show. Yeah, we well. love dogs. I got a little fluffy puppy, Mark, living in L.A. So that sounds like a big dog. My wife got hey, hey. On this. Come here. A whole fluffy puppy. This guy's good, he but he's part of the show. Yeah, he's he, <laughs> he wants to play. So here's what the, the experience is for me. I yes. feel like everything we need to know, most of what we need to know, is being communicated every minute, all the time, through everything we are, through our vibe. We just, when we learn language, we atrophied listening. We could just say it. If you say it, I'm supposed to take that for what it is. So when I'm asking a question, I'm really responding to what I felt you wanted to ask me. Right. Even when I go to a big audience, I feel that big audience and go, OK, where are you? Let me meet you where you are, as opposed to driving this bus to where I think we should be. The other thing is, when I'm listening to your responses and the actual words you say, I tend to naturally listen to why did you form that sentence? Not what did you say? Because normally what you're saying to me right here on the surface on this front page is what we're talking about. It's what you think we're talking about. It's what you may be subconsciously saying to subvert what we don't want to talk about. 
So I'm asking you, I'm listening to why. Why would you say that? And let me ask you that question. Where does that come from? Because the come from is where the juice is. So oh. that's a little bit of what goes on for me. You know, I'm, that's I'm really responding. Say, yeah, no, it's, it's amazing because in speaking, as you know, if you show up and you want to tell them what you have to say, it might be good, but it is too much self-managed and they don't necessarily feel it. But when you say, hey, you're going to meet them where you're at and, and you're going to feel with them, that's, that's when it. real impact is felt. And it's dangerous for people who are professional speakers. Because yeah. if you're not professional, and I don't know if I call myself a professional only by virtue of the number of hours I've done it, but it, it feels dangerous to the layperson because without a script, without a blue card, without a, a PowerPoint, that's openness, which means I might fail. But mm -hmm. we have conversations with strangers all day long. We never run out of things to say. So it's a leap of faith to listen first. But the other thing that's really, really important is that when we get stuck as re in relationship, as a coach or being coached or just living, is when we make it about us and what we need, and we forget that we're strongest when we're of service. So when I'm sitting there at the bonfire, I'm not trying to drive a bus into where good ratings might be or how I'm going to look good. Yeah. Wait till I get my moment to say that nugget. What I'm actually trying to suspend is that and get into how can, how can my life and experience and strength and hope and failures be of service to this person who's sitting here asking me? Same thing happens when I speak to a large group. I walk out on stage going, I don't care if you love me or hate me right now. How can I be of service to you? I know what I want to impart to you. Help me help you. Show me your language, and I'll just use those words. And it's right there in front of us. We just never look there because we're used to just listening to what you say and taking that as what as real, right? That is unbelievable. Like, that is it right there. When you think of how can you serve the other person that you're speaking to or That's the group it. of people, it takes all the pressure off yourself, too. And it, it's, you don't feel it's, like you have to carry it. Well, that's business sales. You yeah, know, the totally. first the distinction in primary business sales is sales over en enrollment. Like, what's the difference? And sales is how can I get you to get to buy the thing I want you to buy? And enrollment is yep. how can I show you a possibility for you that turns you on? You know, how can I be of service to show you a possibility that you want that I can facilitate for you? But the, the key there is for you, not for me. Now, my benefit is in line with your success. It's going to work for me too. But I'm stronger. I'm less about my ego. I have less fear. I have less self-awareness when I can step into being fully of service to you. It's Man. the best version of me. Do you think, so I, I was talking with the, the mental skills coach for Metallica the other day, which is, you would love this guy. Phil Toll is his name. Phil Toll. He's an incredible, incredible guy. But we were talking about basically there's two ends of the spectrum. There's ego, narcissism, which is what drives our self-defeat, basically. And there's full alignment with God, a higher power, and basically being in your rhythm and flow. Do you find this as dealing with so many people? Like, that's what you're trying to help people get to this point of full alignment but yet society and everything's pulling them back to the ego and the narcissism side. So to answer that question, I'm going to have to tell you who my guru is in this because she just walked oh, in the yes. room. You hear her <laughs> crinkling stuff as she moves through my wife. It's got to be your better so, half. Yes. So I'm sure. going to now lift the veil like I'm the wizard, you know, and let you know the truth is that everything I Love spit it. that's truth. She read, she did the homework. She highlighted the book. She said it in my kitchen. I told her to be quiet because it's getting on my nerves. Then I say it on TV and act like it's me, right? Mark, I love <laughs> So that. everything I know about ego is through the filter of what Robbie has taught me in the books of Eckhart Tolle, Michael Singer, uh, um, Robbie Say One, um, you know, uh, Richard Rohr, Ram Dass. We could yep. go on. All these people that I'm like, oh, God, don't start again with this. But it's the <laughs> shit. Right. Yeah, and totally. and it, 
it coincides with and it reconciles with what I know to be. And and I say it in lay in, in my terms, right? And what it is is there's only one force that gets in our way. And it's ego. And the other Robbie uses the phrase ego means edging God out. Oh, right? That is good. I know. I, I said Robbie, so I can't take credit. So it, it's you. Oh, that's but, so good. Yeah. But he, she got that from Wayne Dyer. But nice. what I trip on, not trip like fall, but trip on like this is cool, is everything that keeps us alive is fear-based. We are driven as animals not to die today. But the human condition has us do things that animals don't. We're selfish. We fear, we fear things just for the sake of fear. We fear before investigation. We uh, take more than we need. We are jealous of what others have, right? That's all ego. The need to be right gets in the way of, of good all the time. I'm a victim of it. Uh, there's no yes. bigger know-it-all on the planet. I got to keep myself in check every day. <laughs> so, yep. you know, when we shift... When I, let's just keep it on my side of the street. When I shift my <laughs> purpose and my intention to being not about elevating, not about me standing on your shoulders to be taller, but to give you my shoulder to stand on, I become taller. Mm. I'm, because that's an authentic version of me, which is much bigger than the fake ego version of me. Right? Yeah. But it that's really good. takes, it takes a leap it takes, you know, you can't manage, you can't manage me from the shadows. <laughs> I get to do this. <laughs> 35 years hey, of marriage. Robbie, Robbie's amazing. Can I just say this, Mark? What you said about Robbie, I absolutely love for two reasons. One of the most attractive things about a man, a married man, is when he speaks so highly of his wife. I think that needs to be so much more done in society today. And... I say that, I smile when you say that because my wife is the same for me. These two books, the next book, a TED talk that I just did, all my talks are the creative genius of her. I just run my yeah. mouth. I don't really think much on my own. I just run my mouth. Well, so I, I drive her crazy because I do have, I have a couple of things that are, are mine that she can't figure out and I can't explain. So like I, I mem. I don't memorize per se. I can. I used to, as a joke, as a warm-up guy, I used to memorize a whole audience in like ten minutes, wow. and then then I'd have them switch seats and tell you who you are and all that. It, it wasn't a trick. I That's just could do it. But wow. the way I learn best is if something is said to me that is a nugget, and I like it, I remember it. Robbie learns by reading and pouring into it and writing and journaling and and all that homework stuff. Okay. But when she then tells me what she's learned or she's working on, and if it resonates for me, I got that. So when I'm asked what books I've read, I'm like, I don't, I don't read the books. Robbie does that. She gives me the good stuff, and then I take one sentence, and it changes my life. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so um, we're a compliment it. for one another. Yeah. Um, she taught me a phrase. I don't know where it came from called Upu Guru, which is – I don't know what it means actually, but – just, well, you're my upu -guru. I'm her upu guru. She's mine. So, the point is, she she teaches me. I teach her, uh, and we have to sometimes say to ourselves, "Look, let's be husband and wife, and not coach, coach," because that gets. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't want to hear from each other, and that's a, a skill set we're learning and have learned. You know, after thirty five years. Well. Mark, you know what? I'm going to challenge you both to, you guys need to have a show together. How powerful would a couple's relationship show? Have you pitched that before? You had to have. You know what? This is the episode of I Love Lucy that shows up every day in our life where people are like, <laughs> we need to get it. And Robbie's yeah. like, I'm doing a yeah. podcast. And you see Robbie tap dance behind me. So um, uh, yeah. I think, I think uh, that is part of the conversation of what's coming up in 2023. I think there are going to be Amazing. not one, but several podcasts I need to be doing. I I have um, offline. I may reach out to you for some coaching, quite frankly, um, Mark, to I will connect actualize you with yeah. to actualize the things that I know that I I have said I want to do, and I I know enough of my own coaching that want 
I, I always describe the word want as the other side of the, of the magnet. I want mm. appears like I'm getting, but it actually pushes things away. What I'm, what I intend to do is be of service through podcasting. And I, yes. I had had it that there's only one podcast, but I have a feeling there's a podcast. That's what I do. There's a podcast where I interview others. And then there may be a podcast that's Robbie and me. Um, and I may never live yes. that down now that I've said it. in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> But I think that could be what you like it is what you guys are meant to do to help couples as well. Not just, I mean, obviously you help couples in the shows and all that you do, but marriage. You have no idea how much that, that um, dynamic shows up at temptation Island actually, because yeah, the man. bonfires yeah. that I do on that show, um, they're unscripted. I don't look at those clips beforehand. I don't have a list of questions. There is nothing rehearsed. I don't know where we're going at all. I have trust in my executive producer. We always joke that we share a brain. So I've got an earpiece and she's there. Um, the number of times that I hear the earpiece click on and then click off because I'm about to say what she's about to say uh, are amazing. But there are many times where she fills in things that I may have missed because there's four of them and one of me and whatever. But what's really important is that after the bonfire and before the bonfire, I go to Robbie, who knows me. And she'll say, this was great and this wasn't great. I thought you were going to ask this. here Because I can fool anybody and think, oh, what a great guy. That's, you know, that's ego. I know how to do that. That's the hustle. Yeah. yeah. Robbie, I can't fool. And her input is the where I learn as well. We've taught each other how to be adults. And our relationship, as dysfunctional as it may appear, is actually goals for a lot of the kids on this show. So, um She's there unofficially, but she's the yep. only advisor that I really listen to other than my executive producer. So Mark, I think, you know what? I think I've given me even more. Oh, I thought like I watching any show, you think like, well, they've watched this before. This has to be like, they know what they're going to say to an extent. Like that is unbelievable, but, but it makes sense. It makes sense for you because you're going well, to a choice. Point of, yeah. It's oh, a wow. choice, David. Wow. Here's the thing. The show is a crazy reality show. And it could pander down to that level, and we could script it, and we could make it crazy, and I have no interest. Yeah. Just, I don't know how to do that. It's not me, my vibe. Yeah. So what I realize is for me to be authentic, I'm out of the reality part. You guys do your thing. That's I'll watch it. I'm, I have no judgment of it. But when we go to the bonfire, these people are going to look at these clips. Now, are they acting? Are these clips, uh, are the what people are doing on the island all for TV? I can't make that judgment. I think part of it is and part of it isn't. What I can do is say to them, I'm buying what I'm selling. So you may think it's a TV show, but it's not a TV show for me. And for me to be really there with you, I'm going to watch this clip with you, not before you. Yeah. I'm not setting up an idea of where I'm driving you. So we watch it, and I every time you say what I say, what did you see, or how do you feel? Because what you see is not what I saw. You saw him cheat. I saw him flirt, but yeah. you have a yeah. connection. Wow. So for me to do what I want to do, I need to not have an agenda. And that dangerous thing I talked about earlier is I have to have the gap of the space of. We have a conversation. Trust that I will open my mouth and something else will come through. So, you know, for me, that's the way I like to do this. And I have a show, this is a very rare thing, that is willing to indulge that, which means that we're going to shoot an hour and a half to get eight minutes, right? Yeah. And um, yeah. it works out that way. But I'd much prefer to do that. You'll notice I don't I don't have cards. There's There's – there's scripting in that, you know, tonight we have a bonfire. Here's what I expect. You're going to see this, the language that we want from the network that I say, and then we'll do that. But as far as the conversation that we have, um, 100% unscripted. And we we used to brief them. Like, we think we're going to go here. We think we're going to go here. And now we just look. I look at Trafari, my executive right. producer. She looks at me and she says, you got this, and I got you. And I'm like, I let's go. That. So it's, it's a real that. thing. Yeah. Man, and it's so real. It's like when we're watching this, when me and my wife are watching this, we see these people. We're like, "There's no way 
this man, this big old man is going to break down here. And then you just get him to tears. He completely changes. He changes his life, his whole outlook. Like what, what can, you can are doing you? for people is amazing. Well, for those watching this, it's a gift we can all give one another because I find that life and what makes us tick is much simpler than we like to think it is. Like we like to write a whole story about pipes, pop psychology and all the anchors and triggers and this, that, and the other. But I think there's really some basic things. We want to feel safe, but what we really want to feel is seen and heard. We don't need you to fix us even. I just need you to look at me and see me without judgment. And a lot of times when you see these big guys, strong men break down and cry, it's because maybe for the first time in a long time, they've had, they've been given the space to drop the front. And I'm not saying anything more to them, but yo, I see you yeah. and I hear you. And what you're feeling is not, you're not the first one. You're not alone in that. Boy, that's like that's like a blanket, right? When I get that, I get choked up. When I see, when I'm struggling and not feeling hurt and, not, and I'm throwing tantrums and I'm egos dancing and, and I'm doing all my things, right? I'm passive aggressive. I'm dominating. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> you know, I'm using every hustle I got. And then somebody says, yo, I, I see you. I see your pain right now. I'm a mess. Because that's really yeah. the first step of healing is to feel like you're not broken, that you're just being a human. You know what I mean? You're just being human. Yeah. Yeah. You're not supposed to get this right. We don't get it that's right. All right. Man. There is no that's, right. That's the that's, other thing I like to say. Yeah. Everything that happens just is. You yeah. get to choose yeah. your relationship to it. Problem is we don't have good models for relationship a lot of the time. Man. Mark, right? This is so good. This is oh, so good. Thanks, man. Yeah, it is. It's so good. It's and it's funny that you say that too. Like just being seen and heard. Like I bring it back to this Metallica conversation I had, and these guys are the top in the world. They're selling millions of records, sold out stadiums, and all they want is the respect from their bandmates to be seen and heard. That's all they care about. They don't care from their about bandmates. So, so their coaching is about their relationship as a band. Yeah, because they couldn't get along together. They couldn't write I songs together because they were fearing what this guy thought. Oh, he didn't like me. Oh, he doesn't like this. Oh, he said this. All they wanted to be was respected, loved, seen, and heard. It's crazy, right? It's that simple. Man. It's well, so much, so much as I'm getting older, I try to boil it down to the simplest stuff, including Temptation Island. How I got this thing is that that doesn't work on any level of logic. This is a show I did in 2001 that got canceled. Yeah, you know yeah, sure. the original show. It came back twenty years later. There's no logic in show business that says a guy at my age is going to host this hot show at this point after being canceled for twenty years. That doesn't happen unless intention oh, gets God, clear, yep. and the universe says, "How about I show you a possibility you didn't?" There's a quote I use a lot, and again, I'm laughing at myself. It's a quote I love to quote. It's from Hamlet. Your boy's never read Hamlet. I don't think I've seen him <laughs> so I can ask. appropriate from Shakespeare. <laughs> but in, in true Wahlberg fashion, I hear one thing that, that rings to me and that works. And the, and the quote is, there, there are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. So basically saying that, look, my, my human ability to imagine, my ability to imagine the most outrageous possibility is short of what is actually possible in totally in the universe totally. so i always say ride the bus don't drive the bus but get off the bus ready to play so that's what happened is that i i started boiling things down to the simplest i could have a list of the things that i want to go right and a list of the things that are going wrong but really what it comes down to is two master switches resistance or acceptance mm. fear or peace joy okay. or misery right and the more I kind of stay present to that simpler vibe, it allows me to feel confident enough to say yes to whatever's showing up to me and then create a relationship with that that's empowering is instead of disempowering. The fearful person sees what's coming down the road going, okay, 
how are you going to get me? And the person who's been already cut and healed and scarred and whatever and is no fear, go ahead, gut me, goes, okay, bring this to me. How have you shown up to a servant? There's a book I read that talked about how the aborigines, the original aborigines looked at stuff. Where a snake comes across the road and we run, they go, thank you for dinner. Like everything is there for you. And that, another Robbieism, is what happens to you happens for you. Yep. And that's just a game to play. It may not be true, but you could also play the game of what happens to you happens against you. So play whatever game you want. You know, my game is what if what if God wants me to be happy? <laughs> what if that's there the plan and I'm just in the way? And all yeah. day long, I'm messing up the plan by driving <laughs> this bus out of the place that he put me. Right? But I think that's exactly right, Mark. I think that is. I think God created us to be in love and harmony and have happiness and joy. But yet we tell ourselves a different lie. So I think you're exactly right. And you know what? I'm going to encourage you and your you. wife. To, you guys need to write a book together. You you talk about the Eckhart Tolle and stuff that you read in the Wayne Dyer. Like you are preaching it. What if you wrote a book, Resistance or Acceptance, and just flip flop those back and forth? You guys would. Have, I mean, it'd be amazing. I um, I have written about 130 pages of what I like to say when I look back at it. Looks like the um, angst-filled diary of a 12-year-old adolescent. It doesn't seem to have a lot of backbone. It's been one of the most enjoyable conversations I have ever had. Like, this is amazing. Uh, yeah, I you know, to... the, it's so funny. I, this is the first time I've ever made notes, right? And all these notes I wrote this morning because I was so fearful that I wasn't going to deliver. And I don't think we've said anything in these notes. But um, I don't think so either. I don't even know if I went through the questions. This was just so good flowing and like I knew would happen if what happened that way. But Man, I would uh, I'd love to be able to just talk to you forever all day. But in respect to your time, we'll throw you on the rapid fire hot seat as we wind do down it. here. So, Mark, okay. quick answers. What is a way that you love to continue to learn or grow? You've already named some books. You've talked about podcasts. Is there anything else you do on a daily basis? Um, there are uh, a, the people I follow on Instagram, even the silly ones. Whatever they post has me in a conversation of questioning. So I find it everywhere. Um, yeah. So I, I can't say that there's a tenant or a person, a, a well I'm drinking from, yep. but I like to look at all information that I get as either an example of something I need to. What if, what if it's all these, you want a short answer? <laughs> Rapid fire. No, no, the no. This is good. Is, Keep going. Keep going. I know. I like where you're going. What if every bit of information is actually coded guidance, yes. but you get to choose exactly. what relationship you have to it, as opposed exactly. to what we're thrown to be is this is bad, this is good, I agree, I disagree. What if it's just Man. info that we get to look at? So I'm constantly realizing that everything that shows up might be a movie. And it's really out of my own psyche asking questions about my direction. Every And I say this on the show. Every time I coach you, the question you've shown up, what's coming out of my mouth is what I needed to remind myself of. You may not even exist. So thank you for <laughs> asking the question for me. That is great, That's man. That is, that is better than any short answer you could have said. And I think that is a theme of the choice of how you view things. It's just like people say, oh, failure, rich, like whatever – you grew up tying certain annotations to a to a, a word is what you believe, but it, you don't have to believe that. You can totally mm -hmm. flip it on its head. Like with basketball shooters, I always ask them, like, when was your sh last shooting slump? Body language crumbles. They're like, you know, I couldn't make a shot for five games. And then I'll say, hey, when was your last shooting hippopotamus? And they'll be like, David, what are you talking about? Shooting hippopotamus? But it's just a word. It's your choice how you view that word. So good, Mark. I, so good. I had lunch with a... Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. We'll be here. No, all no, no, day. no, no. <laughs> I lunch with I'm a, on your a time, D, man. I I had lunch with a D1 basketball player. Uh he's he's you know a business partner of mine now, but a champion. Nice. Like has played at that yep. level. He's six feet six feet tall. He said when I was talking about his drive, his swagger, his ability to walk in guns a blazing, committing to this is going to be a great outcome. 
He says, that's what you have to do when you're a shooter and you're six feet and 6'10 is guarding you. You can't think, oh my God, he might block it. You got to say, I'm making this. I'm, I've made this shot already. The outcome is going to be whatever it is, but you get to choose the game, right? You get to choose. Yep. You can say, oh, yep. shit, I'm never making this, or it's in. And it's either going to be in or yeah. it isn't, but chances are you're probably going to intend an action. Next and that's, that's 100%. It is, it is, right? As I go to this, this next question, but it is the thing, like, it, it's what you've lived your whole life. It's what I've lived my whole life. You look at things from a, a viewpoint of, well, this person can do it. So, I mean, why me? Why me? He can do it. He's got all this. Or why not me? Somebody has to do it. Why isn't it going to be you? It's a complete, just a flip of the switch. That's all it is. I, when I was a runner, I was the oldest living runner in, in show business. And I was making no money and I was married. So I was in trouble. And I was driving through uh, Beverly Hills delivering tapes and stuff. This is what I'd say to myself. Every single house on this street, and there are hundreds of them, represents somebody who killed it at some level mm -hmm. financially. And if I take the IQ of everybody in these houses who killed it, I'm going to be at least at 50% of that. Right? Yep. There's no reason yep. I can't kill this. Love that. Now, yep. that was 25-year-old me thinking, and now I'm sitting in my house in Van Nuys, Sherman Oaks. I'm not in Beverly Hills, and I'm not killing it at that level like that. But what I decided to kill is entirely different and as valuable to me. And I've killed it there. So I've got everything I yep. need and more than I want. Yeah. And so, you know, compare and despair is what Robbie says. Compare and despair. Quit measuring. Totally, man. Your rich life. Yes, man. That's so good. Okay, so you have been around a lot of the top people. You've been around amazing people, interviewed them. Is there anybody that stands out to you that you're like, man, if I could just, I would love to sit down with this person, have a conversation with them, pick their brain, have dinner. Who would that person be? And more importantly, what are you guys eating? I can tell you what we're eating and where we are. Who that person is is difficult for me. I've had the luxury yeah. as a moderator to interview some pretty great people. I interviewed Tony Blair. Yeah. He's a head of state, wow. right? I've interviewed Michael Strahan a couple of times. I dig him. I've interviewed some political people. I've, been, uh, I've interviewed uh, actors who have made an impact or had a struggle with uh, some health issues and how they've come over that. So that stuff is great. Where I really am passionate and disturbed is the division in our mm. life society world right now. And more importantly, the illogic of the division. So I'd like to have dinner, ironically, with some people on the wrong side, or in my opinion, the other side of how I feel things should be. Or I wouldn't mind having dinner with the oppositions of in other words, I wouldn't mind having like a far right and a far left at my dinner, and that dinner is cooked by me around a campfire in camping, and we're sleeping in tents, right? So the yeah. dinner is going to be, you know, my Dutch oven peach cobbler, and maybe some trout I made, and, you know, some potatoes, and the stuff I make by the fire. It doesn't taste good, but it's brown and it's hot. And That's I don't know what this theme is around sitting around fires and talking about stuff, but there's something real about that. So that really is where I got stuck today, thinking about who I'd have dinner with. I, the, I went with the, the first ones, Gandhi, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X. Yeah. These are people I yeah. admire. These are people who fought the good fight. I'd like to know what that is. You, but really you the dinner what, that I'm passionate about yeah. are people that have opposing views in dis, in, that are divisive. And then me getting to ask the question as the student, where's the logic in this division? Because yeah. it comes to the intention I speak about. Do you want to be right? Is that your intention? Or do you want to be happy? Hmm. There's a, a possibility people don't consider. Because in gameplay that we learn, there's win. And every win represents loss. If I win, you lose. But the mutual win is not something we exercise a lot. Where's the... When, where we get to stand in how we feel about life, but somehow accomplish something together that leaves us both walking away, not needing to avenge a loss. And that's mm -hmm. called peace. 
Mm. Right? Mm. And that's totally. kind of what my intention is. Man, so you one up that question too. Like no, when you're saying this, think about this. What if you could, if you go into a conversation with the biggest drug lord, narcos, all that kind of stuff, he's got, he's, well, well think like he's got an amazing skill set to lead people. What if you could have a conversation with him and show, hey, maybe you can lead for something else by showing him how to be happy or asking him certain questions? He uses that crazy skill set to lead people. And now he becomes this person who's leading for good. It's just like the Saul well, translation of Paul in the Bible. There's Man. a nugget that I'm always amazed that our politicians, our thought leaders, our uh, mediators, those people who say they're committed to peace, miss. And I'm mm. always confused by this. So in the example, this fictitious example of a drug lord, before I indict this drug lord, why aren't you using your powers for good? Has anyone considered going, I see how, remember I listen to why this, not what yeah. this. Yeah. Okay, you developed what you developed out of a need of service to you and others. Now, without judgment of the deaths you may have caused and the what drugs are doing and what it has done on a geopolitical um, arena, let's start by letting me acknowledge that your path was your path and it came from somewhere. We were all mom's child at some point. So I want to talk to you first about that. Let's talk about who you are. What are you committed to? What are you fighting for to protect against? Because if I can, if I can stop what I need and listen to what you are, I can have an understanding of how you got here. And that's the only way we're going to get to somewhere else. Right? But mm -hmm. if, if the starting point is, look, I'm going to talk to you, Putin. I'm going to talk to you whoever, and try to resolve this because you're doing wrong. Yeah. And you have the skill set to do better. Couldn't you do that? That's that dad I don't want to yeah. talk to. Yeah. yeah. What if yeah. I was like, hey, I've got no judgment of the way you make your money. You know, you can ask me how I feel about it, but I'm more interested to see how you feel about it. And what is it you really, really, if I could create a fantasy for you where you have all the things and none of the worry about indictment or being shot by anybody else or having to kill, because I know no matter how gangster you are, you don't like pulling that trigger. Uh -huh. What's that? And it goes into relationship. You can't have a healthy relationship until you define a healthy relationship. Man. Right? The ego needs me to be amazing. bigger, stronger, and more armed than you. Right? So... That's the dinner I want to have. I want to ask the question, why, yeah. why, why? And how can I serve this for you? I want you to feel as safe as I feel. Man, there it is again. This is, I see you. I hear you. Mark, I'm going to write in a voting ballot for you to run this nation because that is the frame of reference we need to run by. That is gold, Mark. How, Thank how you. can we all follow you, support you? Where can we watch you? Like, this is... We need more of you. Um, hey, all the socials. I think uh, yep. I'd have to look. I think I'm Mark L. Wahlberg on Insta. I'm Mark Wahlberg on Twitter. Maybe the other way around. Y'all, make sure it's the right Mark Wahlberg. My boy doesn't need any more followers. <laughs> Your boy needs some help. Hey, hey, you're the cooler Mark Wahlberg. I'm going to throw that out there. You got more swag, too. I don't even think you – I'm not even saying from like a, a – a, a perspective of teaching and coaching and helping people, but I think you have more swag too. He ain't rocking Jays or Air Force One. Oh, come on, he's rocking his own brands. I got nothing but respect, yeah. love, and props for him. And we don't agree on a lot of stuff. He doesn't even know I exist. Yeah. But there are things that are that he's. But here's what I let, go back to what we're talking about. Let me just say this: This is a man of faith. I'm talking about the other Mark Wahlberg. It's not my mm -hmm. faith. Don't necessarily agree mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. But he's a man of faith. He's a man committed to his family. And he's a man committed to success. Yeah. Got nothing but love for that. So every time I get compared to him or mistaken by in Twitter, somebody tweets me. If he does something wrong, they yell at me. If he does something right, they're trying to praise me. 
the compare and despair thing could be my ego trap. I'm not seen. Uh, hey, I'm I'm this Mark Wahlberg. I don't care. Or when I care, I have to check myself from caring. Because I can't let that, my recognition, and you knowing the difference between the two of us, define who I am. Because that's about me. So I have to flip that script and see how can I be of service to you. So if I get a message and it's meant for Mark Wahlberg, I take the time to tweet out this person or DM them and say, yo, I think you got the wrong guy. I want to make sure this message gets to the right guy. Here's his handle. You know? That is, hey, that is, that, that is such a, such a great thing to, just for people to understand. It's, you could live in this just, man, I despise this other Mark Wahlberg. Why does he have to have my name? He's got all these followers. But instead, you live in a place from love. Well, what about, what what if, what if what I said was true and that reason we have the same name isn't a mistake? I don't know the answer. I don't know how it serves me. But like I said, I get to have a relationship. Everything that happens just happens. There is no good and bad, yep. in my opinion. Yep. It just is. Yep. Matter of fact, if you believe in the Bible, when asked what your name is, his response was, I am. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not a name. I'm not a place. I'm not a time. I'm not anything. I just am. I is, right? I am. <laughs> so... Yeah. The the human thing is now you am, but you good or you bad, and I am okay. constantly trying to go. I get to choose that. If it just oh, is, man. then I get to choose: is it here for me or is it here to hurt me? And most of the time, you know, it, wow, it's all the time it's Mark, here for me. We are dropping the mic on that. There's there's nothing we can do to top that. You can't top anything after you say I am out of the box. Like that's it right there. This is. Yeah, I, I I looked up at the clock. I'm like, I cannot believe this has almost been an hour. You are so gracious with your time. I said, hey, 25, 30 minutes, and we are just flowing. Mark, thank you so much for coming on the podcast, and thank you to Robbie for being the amazing rock and better half to you that you are, and giving you this time to do this, but she man, peaced out like 20 anything. minutes ago. She's shopping. She's gone. So <laughs> she <laughs> what, what she heard, we're doing a podcast together. She's like, see ya. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, this has been incredible, man. I, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Like if there's anything that I can do for you, I would love to help you. And not mm -hmm. even just from like a, Hey, for you, but for other people, the more I, the more of you helping other people on a massive level, just makes the world a better place. And there's no doubt about it. Uh, I appreciate all that you're saying. It certainly is filling up my ego. My, my tank is full. I'm going a, I'm to a strut around the house after this. Um, and I appreciate the <laughs> offer, but you might have messed up because I need help. I need several coaches in my life. And I think, and I'll say this before we're even done rolling. I looked, I looked you up and all the stuff that you've done and all the boxes of the things that you've done. You've written a book. You do the corporate speaking. You're coaching. You've built the successful infrastructure all in line with who you are is an example of some of the stuff I'm talking about. And when I look at what I'm doing, there's action that needs to be taken. There are, there are anchors and triggers in my past that stop me from taking action that seems simple for you or others. So uh, I'm constantly open to new coaches. Glad to know you. Looking forward. I said to you when you emailed me, I said, I'm looking forward to see why we found one another. Right? Yeah, you did. I, I love that. One. I love that. And um, yeah, and I'm excited to have a new uh, you know, friend and uh, teammate. Well, thanks. And if nothing more, you can work on this because <laughs> I can't I can't I can't go to the to the hole of like, like I need that fucking footer right now. I just need that. Uh, that's <laughs> all I can do too, man. man. That's all I could do. Okay, so if you enjoyed that podcast, check this out. What I do is I give keynote talks to companies, corporations, organizations, teams all throughout the com country and the entire world. If you want me to come speak to your team, to your company, or know somebody who might, reach out to me, please. I'm very easy to get a hold of, david at davidnurse.com. And I'm also doing some super special gives with my new book, do it, the life-changing power of taking action, coming out April 4th. Message me because I'm doing some gives for free talks, for free coaching courses, 
even an amazing NBA team.